Hello there, my very good friends. On today's After News, we have a rumour killer on William Regal going back to WWE. A controversial return for WWE at Survivor Series. Going to tell you the latest on the next WWE draft. And Survivor Series War Games broke loads of records. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the After News. Uh, we're beginning this one as we did this morning by talking about William Regal. But this came out, I think, like five minutes after we got out of the studio. Typical. So you know we have to come on here and talk about the correction and go over it with you. So this morning we covered uh, the report from Dave Meltzer that WWE are interested or have had discussions about bringing William Regal back. Accusations! Uh, accusations! Rick Ross was there. Uh, <laughs> I am sure that they probably have. Um, however, Meltzer reported at the time that he had heard that Regal had only signed a one-year contract when he joined AEW back in the spring. Uh, Meltzer has since corrected this. Um, per some bits and pieces that William Regal said shortly after debuting in AEW, that contract was for three years. So his departure from AEW or his contract expiring is not as imminent as mm. we first thought. That would mean he would be bound to the contract until spring of 2025. So. The bidding well hive of 2025. There you go, staying alive. <laughs> um, so there you are. It, it, it makes it a more complex situation so WWE can have these discussions about potentially bringing him back, but they're probably going to have to wait a little while longer than originally thought. Um, obviously, Regal could just get a release between now, or he could ask for a release. Yeah. Getting one might be another matter entirely. Um, there's no indication that he's going to do that, we should point out. There's no indication that uh, this past Wednesday's Dynamite was a write-off, which is what it was interpreted by many people. But they are the latest on the situation. Yeah. I think Regal is going to come back I think when so MJF too. needs him the most, yeah. quite possibly. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you about that, because obviously AEW aren't going to be giving most wrestlers their releases. Yeah. Um, that's fairly been fairly obvious with the whole Andrade situation. But yeah, do you reckon Regal's a different case? Because uh, on the one hand, I think he's, I'm sure he's very happy within yeah. AEW, and I don't think he'd be like, I need to get out of this contract. But Triple H being in charge of WWE, as we mentioned at the time it happened, does change things. I thought it was a dumb release from WWE anyway. But, yeah, you know, it really was. Any chance, yeah, Tony Khan changes his strategy if it comes to Regal? Really, really tough to tell. I don't think Regal is the kind of guy who, if he's denied a release, is going to go and punch Sammy Guevara in the face. Um, like some other people are rumoured to have done. Yeah. Um, that being said, Tony Khan might look at William Regal with a degree of reverence and go, you know what, pal? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Whatever, whatever. Um, I am in of the belief that if somebody, if Regal decides that he wants to leave so he can go back to WWE, he should be allowed to do that. Um, I think that wrestling holds too much power over mm -hmm. his independent contractors, which is what these people primarily are. It's very, very rare that you get someone classified as an employee in wrestling. If they were employees and they had the benefits of being an employee, then okay, that's a different conversation. But with the one-sided nature of wrestling contracts, I think uh, I think it'd be nice for him to have that freedom. But yeah. I wouldn't feel confident of saying that it would be any different mm. to what the wrestlers are proposing to. Watch this. WWE certainly seems to be open to allowing quite a few different people to come back, though, because that's <laughs> what happened at Survivor Series War Games this weekend. Games. Uh, controversial figure... Brian Kendrick was working as a producer at the premium live event over the weekend. He was responsible for putting together uh, the Ronda Rousey Shotzi, well no, just Shotzi now, yeah. uh, SmackDown Women's Championship match. Uh, Fightful Select, the first to report this um, regarding his role at the event and PW Insiders Mike Johnson reported that Kendrick was sort of getting a tryout for this as a producer. No word on whether or not he's been fully hired back by WWE, but it is uh, noteworthy of course Andy, because as I said, he's a controversial yeah. figure. He's been a conspiracy theorist for quite some time now, uh, talking theor theories around the Sandy Hook massacre, the JFK assassination, the Holocaust, of course. But the biggest story uh, a while back, of course, was when he was going to wrestle on Dynamite. That's right. Yes. That announcement, I think, came the same day that he left WWE. Yes, as, uh, yeah. yeah, I should have mentioned that. Yeah. Um, he was going to wrestle on Dynamite and then even more um, outrageous comments um, anti-Jewish rhetoric did the rounds yeah. on social media he was immediately removed from the show um, very surprising that WWE have elected to bring someone like him back as a producer particularly with you know the personnel that WWE have as well yeah so Kendrick 
was, I believe he was in a production role prior to his departure, as well as doing some coaching from WWE. He asked for his release earlier in this year. He got it. He was going to go to AEW and then... Was he coaching so Rousey? Have I made that up? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Ronda Rousey went to went to Kendrick. So it's quite appropriate that yeah. he was producing that match. And if it's a tryout and, and whatever, whatever. Um, his situation is... Obviously, the stuff that came up, it started doing the rounds again when it was announced he'd been booked for AEW. It's, it was over a decade old, and not that that changes the impact of those words. I think ultimately the people... Uh, look, I'm not... You're not either the person who should decide whether or not Brian Kendrick should be forgiven for this stuff. We are not the people who could be demonised and victimised by those words and by those harmful theories. Um, it should be up to the people who would be in those shoes to determine when's yeah. enough, when enough's enough. So not up to us to sit here and go, yeah, enough time's passed. That would be extremely privileged of us and we're not going to do that. Um, yeah, the, the, there you go. That's my kind of summary of the situation. Yeah. No word if he's been brought back full time yet. Awful stuff uh, that started doing the rounds again. Like just some of the absolute worst rhetoric you could possibly yeah. spit. Um, he did apologise, you know, when this came out. He, he made a couple of tweets saying that this isn't really... I don't hold these beliefs and these were terrible things to say and stuff. Um, you got to mention that as yeah, part yeah, of the balance yeah. on it. But yeah, there you go, Brian Kendrick. Uh, we'll see what's next, Yeah, I we'll guess. bring you any updates as regarding his position within WWE as and when we get them. Draft! There's going to be a draft. When's Shut that door! Oh, I see what you mean. Shut the bloody door in this bloody room. is freezing here. <laughs> Gee whiz. Uh, right, so WWE, according to Dave, Wrestling Observer Radio... Uh, we're going to wait until after WrestleMania. To Good. Do the draft. Seems to make sense. That's the current plan. Obviously, things can change, but things appear to be trending in that direction. At one point, they talked about October, but they decided not to do that. They postponed it. They've moved it back, it seems, um, because obviously October has happened now. So <laughs> there you are. Uh, we can't happen then. Um, we haven't had one since October 2021. I think that post-WrestleMania is the perfect place to do it because WrestleMania is, if you will, your kind of season finale. Mm -hmm. It's where big feuds go and get blown off. It's the biggest show of the year. You can reset after that. That's what it's supposed to be. The problem with doing it in October or whenever was that it was just before Survivor Series and the old theory, the old theme of Survivor Series was brand warfare. And it was like, hey, I've been on this brand for one week, but I love it and I'm going to wear the t-shirt and I'm going to fight for it. So yeah, it's a positive change for sure. And uh, I think that's the perfect place to do it. Yeah I, yeah, I completely agree with your opinions on the draft in October. I thought it was absolutely preposterous to it. I think the right time into it is post-WrestleMania. Plus, they don't really need one right now because the, the rosters are a little bit fluid. Ali was wrestling on SmackDown the other week, of course. You sense with the plans that we sort of fantasy booked going forward. Owens may have to appear more on SmackDown to build up his stuff with Roman Reigns, even though it's, I know he's champion of all the championships, basically. Champion of champions. And Becky, although I suppose with a win in the Rumble, Becky can just sort of go, I want that title, actually, yeah. rather than the Raw one. one. Yeah, so, yeah, it, it's one of those things, I think, um, I get more excited with the draft now in terms of potential call-ups from, from NXT, and that just happens normally anyway. Yeah, but they've been kind of normalised. I don't, I don't feel, and also I get so confused for weeks afterwards going, like, where's AJ Styles on this show? Oh, no, he's never, he's not been on it for months. Or That's whatever. the thing, and then guys go at, like, number 57, and you're like, what? Where am I going to keep track? <laughs> Do you remember when that year where they were like, oh, who's going to be in the draft? What's going to be the order? You know, like, who's going to be get claimed? The draft for me should always be, we're claiming this person from the other show, not so-and-so has been drafted to the show that he's already on. But do you yeah. remember that year that they were like, who's going to be drafted? And they released the names in the order that they were going to get drafted in. Yeah, they put it on the website, didn't they? They completely put um, it on their own spot. Yeah, silly sausages. Yes, but look forward to that after WrestleMania. Good, good yeah, a bit like of a shake-up, that's what I we like need. Um, WWE have been very careless, because they've broken loads of records, that is. Oh. With the series. Uh, War Games. Dave Meltzer again oh. on the Wrestling Observer reporting um, that they drew the largest ever professional wrestling gate in Boston, Massachusetts, uh, breaking seven figures in the process for Survivor Series 2022. And on top of that, uh, the War Games I incarnation was the most watched Survivor Series event in history, although that is not surprising considering it is on Peacock, Peacock in the uh, United States, which is why we have to, here in the UK, when we're watching it on the network, go, why are they airing a vignette for Charlotte Flair? Is she coming back? It's so confusing. There was there was ones where we were watching it initially when it happened, when they first went to Peacock, where I was like, oh, I guess some of Big's going to be happening with Brock Lesnar soon because they're showing loads <laughs> of it. It's because they go to adverts, of course, in the States. Yeah. Um, but yeah, fair play, Survivor Series. I think the War Games... 
Um, you know, depending, regardless of how you feel about how the War Games matches went, I think reinventing Survivor Stories, Survivor Stories, uh, rather than it being red versus bloody blue, I'd, I'd take anything in War Games as an exciting new uh, thing for the for the main roster. Yeah, yeah. I think um, we're going to be entering a period now where every show is going to do the most watched ever in the brand's history. Yes. Um, because Peacock has 15 million subscribers. So, of course, um, <laughs> that number is up, I believe, from 9 million the previous year. So there's a lot more people watching the platform, subscribing to it. Naturally, more of them are going to drift over to WWE, so that programming is going to do better. The network never came close to those kind of numbers. Um, so it's a natural consequence, but yeah, 15,000 fans are thereabouts in Boston. Um, it sold out pretty much straight away. Ticket prices are crazy these days, so high gate, good stuff. It's good to hear. Um, I think as well, WWE released like a couple of hundred tickets just before the show went on the air. Scalpers took those and immediately sold them on the secondary market. So I, I don't care about like, oh, but scalpers bought all the tickets. The, I don't like those arguments. Who cares? They've been sold. That's, yeah, all, the yeah, yeah. That's all the company's going to care about. They don't care if Stevie's bought them to sell to Johnny for twice the yeah. price um, at the end of the day. So yeah, they are. Uh, it's good news. We're, th these stories are going to keep coming through as we uh, break more and more records. Yeah, it'd be very interesting to see what happens next year with Survivor Series off the back of this because it was actually a good Survivor Series where, you know, the main thing that people came out talking about afterwards wasn't an egg. So. Yeah. There's a, yeah. there's a great lore of the AIG, of course, with Survivor right. Series, but uh, last year's was bad yeah. um, because not having The Rock there and just having an egg in his place. Didn't quite do it for me, but well, yeah, War Games. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to keep doing. I mean, I mean, he was talking about it in that press conference, wasn't he? Whether or not he's going to keep doing War Games going forward. Um, but yeah, a uh, hell of an achievement, <laughs> despite the, the advantage of being on a 15 million subscriber base t TV streaming thing. That's it. That's it. It's uh, the gate is really good. Yeah, really, really good because. Boston hasn't been a very hot wrestling town for the past few years, and this is a great success. And I spoke to my source uh, within Boston and, and asked his thoughts on, uh, on Survivor Series War Games. Do you know what he said? Mm. He thought it was a wicked pisser. Uh, if you want questions... What's that <laughs> easy me? Uh, ask him. Um, if you want questions, they're on the morning news. Go and check that out. Just ignore our William Regal story, because it's lies! But we've corrected it now because we are, <laughs> as, we, as we always say, we are very good professional wrestling journalists and that's what we call ourselves. Yeah, I call myself a journalist all the time. At What Culture WWE we on Twitter if you want to follow us. Like, share, subscribe. Subscribe to What Culture Wrestling for your podcasts, of course, as well. Follow Andy Murray on Twitter at... At Andy H. Murray. Uh, the H stands for, hey, how about Cameroon? Oh, Cameroon Serbia, what a game. You come back. Had what? it on in my peripheral vision. Yeah, we're working, but we're just keeping an eye. Always working. Uh, at Adam Wilborn, at What Culture WWE for all of us, of course. Go, yeah, go check out that morning news. It's particularly good news it's this tidy, morning. Yeah. Although the Sami Zayn story mm, might break your heart. Uh, right, it's been the after news. My thanks, Danny Murray. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you soon. I'm going home now, man. <laughs>